Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to the Q3 FY24 earnings conference call of Vigard Industries hosted by Equirus Securities. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on a touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Manoj Gauri from Equirus Securities. Thank you and over to you, Mr. Manoj Gauri. Thank you, Rikko. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the 3Q earnings call of Vigar Industries. We have the management being represented by today by Mr. Mithun Chitilapilli, uh, Managing Director, Mr. Ram Chandran, Venkatraman CEO, and Mr. Sudarshan Gasturi, CFO. At this point, I will hand over the floor to Mr. Mithun for his initial remarks, post which we can open the floor for Q&A. Over to you, sir. Uh, thank you, Manoj. Uh, very warm welcome to everyone present on today's call. Thank you for uh, joining us today to discuss the operating and financial performance of our co company for the third quarter of the financial year 23-24. I trust all of you have had a chance to refer to our investor presentation, which was uh, shared yesterday. Consumer demand uh, remains soft for most of the quarter, presenting a challenging backdrop, though we saw some revival towards the end of the quarter. In this context, we have delivered a resilient performance as we have reported a consolidated net revenue of 1,165 crores in Q3, higher by 18.6% on a YOY basis. This is excluding the revenues, uh, excluding the revenues from Sunflame. The like-to-like -like revenue growth is 10.9% YOY. In Q3, we saw balanced growth in a geographical basis as the South market grew by 10.6% YOY while the non-stop market grew 11.2% YOY. We continue to progress well on our strategy to scale contribution from non-stop markets, ensuring better diversification for our, for regard across all regions of the country. The electronic segment comprising of stabilizers, inverters, and batteries delivered good traction with revenue growth of 16.7% YOY. In the electrical segment, which remains our largest revenue contributor, com comprising of wires, pumps, switch gears, and modular switches, we registered a growth of 8.3% YOY in Q3. In the consumer durable segment, where we market fans, water heaters, kitchen appliances, and air coolers, the revenue growth was 10.9% YOY. In the case of Sunflame, we had revenue, grown revenues by 2% during the quarter, successfully arresting the decline witnessed in the first half of the year. This gives us confidence that the actions we have undertaken are yielding results, and we are hopeful of accelerating the business in the coming quarters. We have Reporting an improvement uh, in gross margin to 33.9% this quarter from 29.7% in Q3 last year, an increase of 420 basis points YOY. Gross margin has continuously improved over the last few quarters and we have substantially closed the gap that existed at the beginning of the year. EBITDA, including, uh, EBITDA excluding other income was 102 crore in Q3, an increase of 52% YOY basis. The EBITDA margin stands at 8.7%, 190 basis points higher than compared with 6.8% reported in Q3 of last year. Some one-offs have contributed cost increases under the other expenditures. There was a write-back of bad debt provision of around 11 crores in Q3 of last financial year, which makes it a low base. We have also made a provision of 4.5 crores for end-of-life end of product recycling as required by a recent legislation. We have also accrued 4.5 crore towards the strategic projects in the electronics uh, department. Profit of the tax in Q3 was 58 crore compared with part of 39 crore last year, an increase of 48% on a YOY basis. With stable working capital, cash, cash flow remains strong. We intend to repay the term loan taken for Sunflame acquisition over the next four to six quarters. In Vigar Consumer Products Limited, our wholly owned subsidiary, we are progressing well as the manufacturing units are coming up as scheduled. The electronic plant, electronics plant at Panjanagar is performing well. The battery plant at Hyderabad and the kitchen plant at Wapi will commence production in Q4 of this financial year. With the upcoming summer season and indications of demand revival, we remain hopeful of a stronger top-line growth in the coming quarter. 
With that, I conclude my opening remarks and I would like to thank Manoj and the team at Equarius Securities for hosting this call. And I would like to request the moderator to open the floor for Q&A. Thank you. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and 1 on the touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and 2. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Rahul Agarwal, in Credit Equities. Please go ahead. Hi, am I audible? Yes, sir, yes. you're audible, sir. Please go ahead. Okay. Uh, good evening, and thank you so much uh, for the opportunity. Uh, my question is a bit longer term, uh, Mithun, so just wanted to understand a few things. Firstly, on the VGAD standalone business, you know, between the three revenue segments, I think more or less we have different product classifications. My sense is ECDs will see the maximum growth uh, followed by electricals and followed by electronics uh, going into next three to five years. Uh, you know, the ranges could be 12 to 15 for ECD, 10 to 12 for electricals and 7 to 8 for electronics. On top line growth is what my understanding is on a CAGR basis. Uh, you know, which products within this could surprise because, you know, what I understand is 11 to 12 percent is what we target on a CAGR basis for the overall company. Uh, it would help me understand which could surprise uh, and what is the way forward. That would be really helpful. Thanks. That's my first question. So I think we have uh, different categories of different maturity. If you look at, uh, you know, wires, uh, stabilizers, and uh, electrical water heaters, these were uh, traditionally large categories for VGAT and uh, where we are having a substantial market share and our opportunity to grow organically in these segments are limited. So. Uh, I wouldn't say that there is any surprise, but we can say that uh, we we internally look at, uh, you know, categories as matured and, and emerging. And so, so but categories like uh, modular switches, switchgear, uh, kitchen, including sun flame, um, you know, these are all category, uh, fans for us, uh, all the fans is an old category generally, but for Vigard, it's relatively a new category and growing fast. So, so these are some of the categories that will tend to grow faster. I wouldn't say, you know, uh, any one category will, you know, suddenly surprise us or something like that. But but the opportunities to grow in some of these categories mentioned later are uh, more than, you know, the earlier categories which are older categories and, you know, Vigard has covered a significant part of the market already. So, it, so you know, these categories fall into electricals and ECDs largely, right? Yes, yeah, so electronics, uh, you know, electronics, uh, uh, there is a category like inverter and battery which is growing fast, but uh, stabilizers uh, is, is, is a very old category for us. It's the largest category. Uh, we are the largest player. So we can't uh, possibly grow much faster than the industry is growing, uh, you know, so it will probably attract the industry growth. Yeah, so you're right. Uh, ECDs will grow the fastest, uh, followed by electricals and then electronics, yes. And on the margins, uh, would nine and a half, ten percent range, you know, over the next two to three years, is that a fair assumption? And uh, what could surprise there? Because I think a lot of ground has been recovered now. A lot of ground has been recovered, but we still not have, you know, we still have margin. Uh, you know, uh, we would like to improve margins in the ECD segment. Uh, ECD margins, as you can see, are the lowest. Uh, so we still have a lot of work to do in that area. Uh, we have, uh, you know, we are, uh, we have initiated certain actions uh, uh, in terms of, uh, you know, improvement, margin improvement projects. So, for example, the kitchen factory in Wapi to a large degree will address a lot of the margin issues happening in the uh, kitchen appliances space, uh, which is housed in ECD. Uh, we have initiated a lot of new launches and uh, product revamp. Uh, followed by, you know, interventions in manufacturing for fans, which is also showing good results. Uh, so, with, I think if we fix uh, these two, you know, largely the margin issues in ECD should also start to look uh, much more healthy than what it is today. Uh, you know, even though we are, you know, investing more in ECD because it's the, you know, a lot of new categories we are incubating. 
So nine and half to ten is is the range long term sustainable? Is that fair? Yes, even uh, even this year, I think we will be hitting close to uh, we will be closing somewhere between nine to nine point five percent in uh, you know better margins in the current year. So yeah, that is sustainable. We had a very adverse uh, you know raw material price inflation environment, and uh, as you can see in the last uh, three quarters, uh, you know you know sequentially gross margins have been moving up, and they will continue to go up uh, even even through next year. Got it. A second question was on Sunflame. Uh, you know, we've, it's been almost a year, I think, uh, we are reaching in terms of acquisition. I wanted to get your sense on three things. Channel, you've discussed that you want to move, you know, more offline. Uh, sorry, more online, modern trade e-com. Uh, but on geography and product, uh, you know, north and west is 80% of sales. Uh, one question here was, are we going offline for white spaces here? On the channel, obviously, you know, the the... The intention is to increase modern trade e-com. That's where the industry is. But are the margins similar offline versus GT uh, and online? And uh, thirdly, on the product, I think cooktops, chimneys, and hobs and hoods, about 50-60% bulk of the top line. What could be the top three products you know, to be sold going into next two years? What's your plan for the sale? Okay, so I'll ask Ram to answer this. I think it's a very longish question. So as, so as much as we could have understood, we will answer and then we'll come back to you. Ram? Yeah. Um, no, as far as uh, Sunflame is uh, concerned, uh, I think um, uh, you talked about, uh, yes, I think, you know, about 30%, uh, 25 to 30% of the kitchen business is uh, coming from e-commerce. Yeah. And uh, the uh, organized retail is also a significant uh, player in this space, right? And some of the categories are also uh, driven by, uh, you know, uh, own channels, particularly uh, built-in, uh, you know, cooktops and uh, stuff like that, yeah, for hoods and all. So I think from a ch channel perspective, we will have to develop uh, these areas. I think uh, we are at the course of, uh, you know, uh, what I would say, supporting the transition. So I think uh, the you know we have uh, uh, strong uh, teams in VCAD uh, to address uh, you know emerging channels, and uh, this uh, these teams are working together. And uh, I think uh, we should be helping. Uh, they should be helping uh, Sunclean to uh, penetrate in these two channels. Yeah? Uh, I think um, uh, the preparatory work uh, is complete as far as e-commerce is concerned, you know, which was basically, you know, making sure that, uh, you know, the, the team uh, could transition in, you know, uh, get hold of uh, pricing, you know, get uh, supply chain in place and, uh, you know, all of those things. Uh, and I think uh, from uh, the upcoming quarter, you know, the, the current quarter that uh, we are in, I think we should start to see gradual. Uh, traction as far as uh, you know, the kitchen is concerned. It takes uh, two to three months. Um, you know, the our GTM for kitchen is very different uh, from uh, you know Sunflame. You know, Sunflame has uh, uh, what I would say uh, an intermediary to whom you know they uh, go to market. You know, whereas you know we are uh, directly present on the platform as a company. So I think uh, and that that requires different preparation. So that's why it's taken some time. Uh, I think, but uh, the preparatory work is out of the way. And it takes about, you know, two to three months, uh, maybe even four months, you know, before, uh, you know, uh, products take online traction. Yeah. Um, that's as far as e-commerce is concerned. I think uh, the MPRSS conversations are ongoing and, you know, the the teams are in place and uh, we should see, you know, quick uh, traction in that area also, modern trade and RSS. Geographically, I think, you know, we we have, uh, you know, uh, set up a new team for South, uh, uh, for Sunflame. Sunflame has been absent in the South, uh, or rather had a thin presence in the South, primarily some strong presence in Andhra, but uh, very weak presence in other parts of the market. I think the team is on the ground from about, uh, from from the month of August, September, and uh, we should uh, see, you know, traction happening from there yeah, also, yeah. Uh, as far as, um, uh, so, so that is, you know, as far as the, the channel and the geography part uh, that you are talking about. In terms of the category part, I think, you know, the, the gas and uh, uh, what I would say, hoods, yeah, and built-in, yeah. I think these are going to be, you know, the three uh, primary revenue drivers, you know, as we go forward. Uh, built-in, of course, will require investments in terms of shop and shop and probably, you know, exclusive stores, you know, where relevant, right? So. So I think that's something that, you know, you will 
uh, you can expect to see going forward over the next 12 to 18 months yeah uh, now uh, coming uh, so i think uh, that that's covering the channel and the product dimension uh, what were the other questions sorry the first part of your questions as So, so, so basically, the only part left is a bit more specific on the product side. Like top three products sold into next two to three years, will the mix be largely same or it will change? No, it will be largely same. I think the contribution of uh, hoods will go up. Okay, but otherwise, uh, you know, the the contribution in the in the near term will be the same. Uh, but maybe probably over a five-year horizon, you know, the built-in will also become significant. Yeah? Uh, but maybe you know less significant in a three-year horizon, right? So. Got it. I have more questions. I'll come back in the queue. All the best. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Aditya Bhartia from Invest Tech. Please go ahead. Um, hi, good afternoon, sir. Um, yeah. My first question is uh, on the provisioning bit that you spoke about. Could you just repeat that uh, 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 about what are the provisions that have been created in this water and what was the strategic project that you spoke about? Okay, the provisioning. Uh, yeah, yeah. So there are two one-offs which Mithun mentioned. The first one is related to a new a recent legislation. It's called the Extended Producer Responsibility. Okay. Uh, it says that um, these products have to be collected back at, at the end of their life and recycled. Okay. So, so there is a we have provided some amount for that. That was one of the one-off items. the second one is relating to the, some intervention strategic intervention in uh, in the inverter business so that that's a project we have could uh, we have could some kind of approach this this quarter so that's it one of them okay and and this uh, uh, exceeding uh, producer responsibility bit that you take uh, that was in respect of sales that have been made in the past have these provisions been created on a retrospective basis Yeah, it uh, it pertains to sales made in the past. The collection responsibility happens now. Understood. And that amount also is roughly four or two, right? Yeah, yeah. So both are very four and a half each. Understood. And uh, uh, what? Sorry, what's the strategic intervention in stabilizers that you're speaking about? No, it, inverters. It's basically a uh, it's basically a sales. Uh, you know, uh, we have some margin issues uh, in inverters uh, and battery businesses. uh and uh, we also wanted a you know accelerated sales program done um in fact this project was uh uh you know discussed uh, before covid but due to covid we had you know uh, we couldn't we couldn't you know start the project so we are you know doing it in a post covid once the market has stabilized so it basically working on market improvements and uh, sales acceleration in the area of uh, inverters and batteries now uh, we have put up a Uh, to you uh, know world class plants for manufacturing inverters and one for manufacturing batteries we wanted to make sure that you know those uh, capacities are used up uh, you know quickly and profitably understood but this is a, this is the cost that you will continue to incur in the uh, uh, subsequent quarters as well correct uh ram you want to come and i think they may not be phased equally uh, so phasing like you know some quarters will be more than you know every quarter we may not incur this so ram you want to comment on the yeah yeah i'm listening you are correct uh, you know the, there is a phasing issue also here uh, so it's you know it's likely that you know one or two quarters you know the, uh, the you know the initial phasing you know in the design phase you know the team size is large so there is you know the, the loading will be high Uh, and then you know it will uh, taper at least as far as the consulting is concerned the epr responsibility is you know past provisioning right and uh, uh, and the ongoing provisioning is uh, thin and uh, limited right so 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 understood um uh, my second question is uh, on the demand uh, scenario that you spoke about during you said that you have started seeing some uh, green shoots towards the end of the quarter if you could just elaborate a bit about the, on on that what are the what are the changes that you have started to see which are the verticals where you are seeing stronger growth uh, and specifically on something like fan uh, which is a market which i think has gone through a prolonged slowdown uh, uh, what's the demand scenario looking like so well, i think to put it in context the last year um, you know was the um, uh, year when we had to uh, you know cease uh, selling uh, you know non star rated fans 
and um, what we saw in the fan industry was there was significant amount of dumping by almost all players you know because they had to a uh, significant discounting and dumping of you know the old uh, uh, you know type of fans but uh, this fact was known to everyone at least uh, for 12 months so so for we got at least uh, we stopped selling of these fans in october in mean, november itself so in from december onwards uh, our sales was primarily for the star rated fans um uh, so in that sense we did not have this huge uh, you know overhang of uh, uh, discounted and uh, uh, obsolete products in the market uh, bearing vigat's brand name for a long period of time i think we had a uh, we uh, but i think that is probably the reason that for us at least in q3 fans had uh, grown well because la- in q- uh, our last year q3 was not a you know bumper quarter it was a normal quarter for us uh and uh, because of that uh, you know we our our sales had recovered faster and uh, we are uh, having uh, you know fresher inventories in the market so so i think uh, for us at least in q3 fans have done well uh, because our base last year was not that high uh, even in this quarter i think it will do well because uh, 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 uh you know uh, we have some new launches and uh, we, we, there is some uh, good traction we are getting in the market um so but overall we saw improvement in december i think bari water heaters where uh, the weather was not that cold uh, you know at least till uh, till the third week of december uh, there was a slowness in uptake except for electric water heaters the rest of the products we saw uh, improved sentiment in the month of uh, december and uh, jan also has been decent so so yeah understood understood thanks a lot sir Thank you. The next question is from the line of Bhavin Vitlani from SBI Mutual Funds. Please go ahead. Uh, uh, thank you. Uh, it uh, looks like good performance is now starting and hopefully it continues. Uh, so I have a couple of questions. Um, if you could just maybe give us uh, on the uh, fans as a category because what we have seen uh, from the other peers is Uh, after they reach uh, a 3 400 crore kind of a range then they kind of stagnate um, so for we got we understand how it's closer to 100 million dollar plus uh, so how kind of uh, you can go to 1000 plus crore category and then grow also uh, that's the question one uh, the, the second uh, part is if you could just help us with what are the management changes you would have done uh, Uh, at the sunflame and and the other changes that you you are doing maybe if you could talk about it qualitatively that uh, we could act, uh, see some acceleration in the growth after that and uh, the last bit of the question is on the margins uh, so within the ecd as a category if you could just give us a flavor in terms of which is the category that is uh, under indexed in terms of the margins and where is uh, what are you working to get the margins uh, to the double digit category these are my questions okay so i'll answer the margins part first and then i will you know uh, give the rest to ram uh, see in ecd you know we have fans uh, water heaters and kitchen appliances these are the three large uh, you know uh, contributors to the ecd uh, business Uh, we also have airculus but that's uh, you know smaller in size uh, in that uh, both fans and uh, kitchen uh, you know we are under indexed uh, in terms of margins um, in case of fans it's also an issue of scale where you know fan is a very large market so even at uh, you know 100 million dollars uh, you know we are they're getting better but the scale is not uh, you know it cannot be matched uh, to some of the larger players in the industry but uh, in all these places what we have done is uh, two things one is we have gone uh, for a backward integration that means from look at if you look at us you know six years back from almost uh, uh, outsourcing 100% of fans um, uh, and uh, kitchen appliances at least in the case of fans now almost uh, 50 60% of the uh, uh, ceiling fans are made by us uh, which gives us a lot of advantage one in terms of uh, fit finish quality two in terms of the ability to differentiate and three uh, also there is a cost uh, advantage uh, so that is one axis and we will be pursuing the same thing for uh, tpw fans as well as kitchen appliances the kitchen factory will come 
uh, in this quarter and uh, TPW factory is uh, supposed to come up uh, in the next financial year. So, so with these things, uh, we believe that uh, the margins can be better. In the case of, uh, even in the case of electric water heaters, we are not fully happy with the margin because uh, we are slightly under-indexed in the premium part of the electric water heater market. So, our sale is primarily coming from the mid-segment and over end where the margins are not that great. So, so we are t- undertaking actions to, you know, uh, have a better, uh, uh, you know, lineup of products. And uh, just like we've done in France where we've consistently launched uh, premium models in the last uh, 36 months, we will continue to uh, do that. Act- we will start that activity in water heaters. So all this should uh, significantly improve the health of the consumer durable segment. One more thing we have to keep in mind is uh, we are also investing in ANP. We are investing in uh, you know disproportionate manpower. We are investing in uh, you know a lot of other promotional activities because ECD houses a lot of the new categories. So so that's also one of the reasons why as a combined basket ECD looks you know uh, slightly uh, lower margin. But we have gotten a lot better this quarter and I think they will start to see you know continuous improvement. So this is as far as the uh, margin, uh, you know, profile and uh, all that regarding ECD. Ram, you want to take the sorry, other two? If, if I, so I have a just follow-up, sorry, on on uh, your response. Uh, are the gross margins uh, in the ECD comparable? So it's more to do with, as you said, scale and a greater ENP. Uh, so as the yes. revenue or the size comes up, that's the, the whole uh, answer to the Margins yes, a, a, to, a, to a large degree, yes. Uh, but like I said, uh, even in fans today, uh, you know, 60% of the fans are still outsourced. So, purely on a gross margin basis also, we may not be fully comparable because when you are in the outsourcing uh, model, uh, you your gross margins are going to be low. Uh, your ability to differentiate is very low because, uh, you know, you are getting supplied from... But yeah, to a large degree, yes. So, our gross margins are uh, healthy. I think if you look at... Uh, kitchen appliances business, our gross margins are probably comparable. In the case of fans, uh, we ha- still have maybe a few percentage points to go as far as gross margin is concerned. But I think uh, we are getting better. I think uh, I think our presence in the premium uh, segment of uh, ceiling fans is improving much better than what it was five years back. And uh, uh, that is definitely so. It's also a mixed issue, right? It's not only that uh, it's not only good enough to sell, you know. Uh, 600, 800 crores of fans. We need to also sell the right type of fans to ensure that the uh, business remains profitable. And that's where we are doing work and we'll continue to do work. Sure. Yeah, just uh, one more point to add to that, right? You know, if you take something like fan, I think the throughput also matters, right? You know, at different uh, output scale from the factory, conversion, conversion costs uh, can uh, significantly come down uh, making uh, the so, it, you know, it's not only the cost below gross margin, sometimes even the conversion, the manufacturing conversion cost, right? It's not only the frontline sales overhead, but also manufacturing conversion cost can also be a load. But uh, fundamentally, yeah, yes, our businesses are uh, competitive, yeah, and uh, mostly uh, issue is of scale. Yeah. Ram, we want to take the other two. Uh, yeah, uh, I uh, yeah the the second. I'll I'll go with the second one. The first question I uh, forgot, and you know the, maybe you can uh, remind me. So coming to Sunflame, what changes uh, we are making? Uh, fundamentally, okay, in Sunflame, you know we have uh, onboarded uh, you know uh, four key talent. Uh, you know one uh, we brought in a, a CEO for the business. Uh, we've bought in a, a CFO for the business, uh, and uh, we have bought in a person to look after the supply side of the business, right? And and uh, one for HR. So these are the four, uh, you know, the people you know we have bought into Sunflame uh, to manage and support the Sunflame business. Uh, that was the first part. The second part, uh, the you know the the emerging, I mean we you know the the, the business of uh, e-commerce. Uh, the business of um, you know modern retail and uh, regional specialty stores, and the business of um, uh, what I would say as uh, you know the uh, CPC and CSD canteens. I think these you know we are the, uh, what I would say trying uh, to support the through also the Vigard uh, uh, operating teams uh, because you know surely we have deeper and longer relationship and uh, we have a unique. Uh, uh, we, ha- we have some unique advantages in terms of our 
business systems uh, you know uh, particularly in e-commerce or our relationship in uh, you know the organized retail space which should uh, benefit uh, you know sunflame so i think there uh, you know the you know the these parts are being managed uh, you know more recently from the uh, viga teams right particularly the last uh, i would say 3 to 4 months right uh, second thing you know what uh, we have done is you know we have moved uh, you know one of our service customer service people uh, to you know uh, to support uh, the uh, and you know redesign the service operations of uh, sunflame uh, so that you know we are able to achieve uh, you know good uh, turnaround time and uh, you know uh, first time fit uh, you know uh, you know get the first time right you know uh, when it comes to uh, complaints right i think that uh, that should lead to you know positive word of mouth and you know should support the brand with the trade and consumer so the other so these these are areas that we have moved on we have also tried to move fast and uh, quick in terms of trying to you know uh, get some efficiencies going and uh, we have been able to observe uh, significant opportunities uh, for um, you know efficiency in the area of uh, uh, transportation management uh, you know in the area of uh, packaging i think these are early quick wins uh, we are now working on uh, the sourcing side and uh, we will see what comes up uh we 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 have also initiated a, a project uh, which is uh, working on uh, uh, the you know the, the new operating model which will be an integrated operating model where uh, we will clarify sharply you know what operations will be you know jointly handled that uh, mostly the back end ones and uh, the and which operations will run uniquely which is the go to market uh, part of it right so that we get agility uh, we and we get uh, quality and efficiency also so i think that's um, and and you know this we have a project going uh, you know which is fundamentally working on the operating model uh, it will also be working on uh, the growth strategy for sunflame yeah so i think this uh, we expect to have an output in place uh, you know by maybe uh, june of uh, june or july of this year yeah? and uh, that uh, second half of this year we should be able to initiate action and uh, start the roll out yeah Uh, also you know we have uh, you know we have commenced uh, the integration operation and you know you know we have put the sap in place in sunflame uh, so that you know we have uh, stronger controls over the uh, uh, transactional side and uh, we have uh, fast you know we have the ability to have a faster uh, you know reporting of uh, mis right so now we are able to get the sunflame results you know second day or third day so that we can make quick better and faster decisions so these are some of the things that uh, we have uh, put in place uh the first question you know if you may just uh, you know uh, repeat i think i can so so, the, uh, so that was on the fans as a category i mean if you look back last 20 25 years so i think uh, boom, most yeah, of okay. the have kind of struggled uh, with a smaller one yeah 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 so okay. yes yes now i remember now i remember your question that was on fans so i think uh, fundamentally you know your question was you know uh, how will we be able to get you know will we be able to get beyond this and not get stagnated like others right i think we are uh, we are receiving uh, good traction we are receiving good traction and uh, we do believe uh, that you know we will be able to build out our business uh, beyond uh, you know uh, you know 1000 crore revenue with the you know in the next couple of years uh, that fundamentally you know going to happen on the back of improved competitiveness and you know uh, you know uh, improved offerings you know particularly in the premium segment right so i think these are uh, the major uh, drivers uh, i think sa- there are some favorable factors out there in the market so there are some changes that are happening in the market yeah i think uh, you know the, the you know the, uh, the bldc itself is a significant change and you know uh, in this uh, situation uh, the uh, you know the uh the segmentation uh, and you know the uh, established offerings right are getting disturbed and the new platforms are getting established in the market right and that presents a very good opportunity you know for someone uh, to be able to enter and establish new offerings in the market because everybody is on a even footing then yeah so i think that should uh, help and that should favor uh, you know and support uh, someone like us and make it easier for us to establish right and uh, fundamentally the other thing that we are doing is you know we are working uh, to improve our visibility and presence in the retail uh, so that you know uh, we you know we uh, uh, we can improve 
uh, the uh, the ability for our fan to get into the consideration set of the shoppers right so i think you know uh, you know we we are uh, bringing a lot of focus right in improving the displays of our offerings because we have some great uh, offerings and uh, uh, you know they 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 would merit uh, you know significantly higher throughput uh, but many a times constrained either because of reach or because of uh, visibility so i think there is a lot of focus around uh, making sure that you know our offerings are visible to shoppers and you know that, so that you know we are able to get uh, better attraction so i think these are uh, the primary drivers you know which will support uh, the growth of our fan business eh? great i mean that that answers my question thank you so much thank you. thank you the next question is from the line of shubham agarwal from access capital please go ahead hi right, thank you for the opportunity uh, just a few questions first one is on the electronic segment uh, can you give what's the current breakup of stabilizers inverters and battery that's one and we've seen healthy double digit growth in this segment uh, this quarter last quarter as well you know what since stabilizers is a reasonably big part of this portfolio what's leading to this growth and what do you see uh, going forward so we don't give out uh, product uh, specific numbers so sorry what is the second question, second part of the question the, the growth has been good in this segment how do you see it shaping up going forward because since we understand that stabilizer is a large part of this yeah. see what happens with the stabilizer business is it's largely dependent on uh, almost 50% of the revenue comes from the uh, air conditioner stabilizer segment within the stabilizer and most of it is in summer and uh, same thing with the inverters it's also a seasonal business whereas where a high summer is uh, required for a good uh, stay what has happened is um, you know uh, from 2021 fi21 fi22 and fi23 we had uh, uh, disruptions either due to covid or due to poor summer and stuff like that so some of this is also that you know uh, the, the growth uh, uh, reverting back to its long term you know growth and um, uh, mm-hmm. last year for example in sorry this financial year uh, we had very good summer in south and east and we had very uh you know intermittent rains in northern uh, west so hopefully so i think uh, one, you know it's uh, it's primarily weather dependent uh in the case of uh, inverters i think probably next year we will start to see some improvement in uh, sales because like we said we are doing an intervention for sales acceleration so uh, some of that uh, we are expecting to you know uh, bear fruits next year okay okay uh Okay, no, so this uh, uh, intervention which you've done, I believe this is four crores this quarter, and this will continue for how many quarters? In two years, three years, or whatever? Can you give some sense? So the uh, like I said, the the project is running for uh, between twelve to fourteen months, but uh, uh, the 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 charge on P&L may not be equal in every quarter. I think it will it will be uh, you know this quarter we have booked four and a half crores, but we are not expecting every quarter to be that. maybe uh, you know next quarter it will be uh, 60 70% of that and then following quarter maybe you know 10 20% lower than that so so it won't be like uh, it won't be an you know equal charge across all quarters okay uh, okay uh, now second just would you be able to give some understanding like where do we see all these categories growing i mean category wise what you already highlighted earlier the at some category some products are mature some products are not mature but at the category level would you be able to guide on the growth that you see over the next 2 3 years so i think uh, on a blended basis um, you know we should be looking at uh, you know 12 12 and up to 15% growth uh, i think in many in in you know if you look at the current year uh, you know barring wires where there is uh, some slowdown in the b2c segment and we are largely uh present in the you know b2c space and wires um whereas the b2b part of cables uh, and underground cables seem to be growing very well the, the b2c part uh, is slightly uh, impacted due to various issues inflation and poor rural demand and uh, and uh, you know fluctuations in copper prices and so on and so forth so even in the current year uh, we are looking at that kind of a growth and uh, 
uh, we typically try to grow, you know, our top line by 15% every year, and that's something we'll try to do. We don't give out, uh, you know, revenue guidance for uh, by category. Uh, it may be difficult also to do because various things happen. 40-50% um, of our products are, uh, you know, uh, heavily depend on summer, and it, it's very tough for us to give out a long-term guidance on how it will grow, uh, you know, uh, each year. So we don't typically do that. Right. Now, I just have one last question. This is on Sunflame. Uh, we saw good margin expansion, QOQ, uh, in Sunflame. Uh, do you expect this to sustain, improve? How do we, you know, what do you, since you also talked about a lot of efficiency and the things you're doing in Sunflame, the growth will pick up, we understand. And where do we see the margins? Yeah, I think like Ram mentioned, I think we've had some uh, margin improvement, quick wins like, you know, transportation, packaging and all that. And there are more... Uh, more interventions being planned. Um, I think as far as gross margin is concerned, we are very happy with uh, where Sunflame is, and I think our focus will be more on accelerating the sale. Uh, I think if you look at the Sunflame margins today, they are uh, at par or better than many of the industry players uh, because of its, uh, you know, superior product mix and, uh, you know, price realization in the market. So our focus will be on uh, improving the sales acceleration going forward. Right. So, good to understand that uh, the margins at 10.8% broadly will, you know, inch towards that 14.5, which was where Sunframe was earlier or in Q4 last year. Yes, I think with the right uh, uh, kind of uh, volume, uh, we should hit that. And I think, uh, uh, but we will also, you know, see, it is, uh, we will also try to invest more back in the brand. So, I don't want to give out any margin guidance. So, I'm just saying that we're happy with the gross margin improvement. Uh, a lot of the net, uh, you know, uh, EBIT margins will also depend on how much we, you know, plow back into AMP and on all that. And we will be significantly uh, investing back in the brand uh, because we would like to scale it up uh, much larger than what it is today. So our focus uh, may not be, uh, you know, to increase EBIT from this level, but more to increase sales. Okay. Thank you, thank you. So broadly, I understand that the margins will be better than what they were this quarter, though they might not inch up too much. That's what my understanding is. Yes, correct. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Mukesh Patil, from who's an investor. Please go ahead. Uh, hello, sir. Uh, just one question uh, regarding wire business. So, what is the uh, percentage of wire business in our business and how uh, it is growing? Yeah, uh, regarding wire, I think we have mentioned that, um, uh, you know, wire is our largest category. Uh, but um, for Vigard, almost 95% uh, of our sales come from retail trade uh, for house wiring cables. We are not present in uh, industrial cables and LT cable and underground cable. Um, in that sense, uh, the wire business has been under pressure this year. I think uh, our growth has been muted, not only us, across the industry. Uh, primarily, we see that uh, there has been huge inflation, uh, you know, across building product segments. And uh, if you not only look at us, if you look at, uh, you know, sanitary tiles and those kind of companies also are, you know, reporting, uh, you know, muted numbers. Uh, we also think that it can be a timing issue, so a uh, lot of, uh, people are speculating that as uh, there is a lot of push for housing coming in, uh, you know, uh, 8 years, 12 months down the line, uh, you know, the, the demand for uh, electrification for those houses should pick up and uh, then improve the sales of us. And what is the capacity utilization we are in of uh, this business? Uh, one second. About uh, 68 to 70 percent is the capacity utilization for the wire uh, factory. And uh, uh, and what uh, what is the percentage as percentage of revenue of wire businesses? Sorry, can you can you repeat the question? Uh, so our wire businesses, what percentage of our total re uh, revenue? It is about 27 uh, percent. 27-28% of total revenues. Okay, okay. Okay, and what kind of capex we are looking for next two years? No, wire, uh, we just finished uh, large capex uh, in the last uh, 18 months. Uh, we had expanded capacity, so I think 
I think uh, I think the uh, I think we are having uh, we are having spare capacity, and I think uh, even with a uh, you know a sm- a small investment, uh, we can further expand the capacity. So today, uh, I don't think we'll have any huge capex for the next uh, 36 months. For why? So overall business and the thing not why business. Overall business uh, ca- capex will be roughly uh, 80 crores. Uh, for, I think this year also it was about 80 90 crores. Next year also will be about 80 90 crores. Okay. Thank you. That's it from my side. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, you may press star and one to ask a question. There are more than 20 parties in the conference. Ladies and gentlemen, you may press star and one to ask a question. There are more than 20 parties in the conference. Ladies and gentlemen, as there are no further questions, I would now like to hand the conference over to the management for closing comments. Yeah, we would like to thank uh, Manoj and the Aquarius team for uh, you know hosting this call, and thank you all uh, for participation. Thank you. On behalf of Vigard Industries, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines.